Welcome to It's Major. My name is Tabor Cook. I'm the coordinator of undergraduate recruitment for our university, and we're so excited that you have joined us today. Mississippi State is a large, comprehensive institution with tons of opportunities, over 180 majors and emphasis who live in very unique academic homes. And that's the purpose of its major, is to learn all about those homes and what they can do for you. Now, it makes no sense in starting this program where we're highlighting homes if we don't start with the largest academic college that we have. The College of Arts and Sciences is home to 14 academic departments and 27 degree programs. And so all types of opportunities here, and I can't do this alone, so I'd like to welcome Hannah Bateman, the admissions coordinator for the College of Arts and Sciences. Hey, Deborah, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, we're so glad you're here. And so you guys are massive to say the least, which yes. tons of opportunities, but tell us about you. We'll talk about the college in a minute, but tell us a little about yourself. Awesome, so my name is Hannah. I'm the admissions coordinator for the college. I went to Mississippi State, so I was a student in the College of Arts and Sciences. My undergraduate uh, major was communication, public relations, mm -hmm. And then I continued straight into graduate school and got my master's of public policy and administration. So I tell people all the time, not only do I work for the college, but I've been a student in the college. So I'm very passionate about it. Oh gosh, we have the <laughs> professional here. We picked the right person. I'm so excited you're here. Now you said you're an admissions coordinator. Yes. What is that exactly, what does that mean? So my job is to work with prospective students and parents and guests, whoever just wants to know more about the college to let them know about all of the opportunities within the college. So I say all the time, yes, we are the largest college, but that doesn't mean that you will be lost, that you'll just be another number because, because we have so many majors, they're all broken down into such specific areas. So those class sizes, by the time you're a junior and senior, might be 15 people. So just because we're the largest, that doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to get that one-on-one -on -one attention. And there truly is something for everybody in the college. That's awesome. That's a great point, that, that class size, which a lot of people do worry about. Right. But tell us how long you have been in the College of Arts and Sciences. So I'll start from when I started in Mississippi State. I came to Mississippi State fall 2012 and then graduated in 2016, went straight to grad school, and I was a graduate assistant in the college. And then in the spring of 2017, I took on this job. So I think that's three and a half years, wow. I think. So it's actually been a while. <laughs> wow, yeah, this is your home. And I'll say this, I learn something every single day about the college. I learn from my ambassadors, faculty, news, I learn something new every single day. I bet, there's so much to know about the College of Arts and Sciences. But to you, in your opinion, what most stands out about the College of Arts and Sciences? I think that the way our curriculum is set up is that students are not just taking classes in their major. That being a student in the college, they have to take classes in the social sciences and the humanities and the physical sciences. So that makes students such a well-rounded person yeah. because you're taking classes in areas that are not at all related to your major. But I tell students all the time, you will learn just as much in those classes as you will in the classes that are for your major. So you just, you get, you learn about the world through the classes and it just prepares you to go into a career, graduate school, and that's something I appreciate. That's so. great. And uh, that's a really cool thing that you say that you're more well-rounded because a lot of us consider the College of Arts and Sciences to be the foundation of your yes. college education. Every single student at Mississippi State has to take classes within the College of Arts and Sciences no matter what their major is. See, so, so it is your foundation. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite part about working in Arts and Sciences? So we're obviously a family at Mississippi State, but within our office, we are a family. We all do different things, but we all can wrap it back around into one, you know, mm -hmm. like we're a part of the college, even though I work with prospective students. Some of our advisors, you know, they work with current students. We have um, people who work with alumni, mm -hmm. and it's all just one big family. But another thing I really like working, you know, by working in the college is getting to know people in all of our departments. So, you know, getting to know faculty members in biological sciences and 
getting to know faculty members and philosophy, seeing them, you know, their friends yeah. cross departments. So I think that's, that's something I appreciate is that I learn about every area, even though some of this goes completely over my head. Yeah. I always use physics, that goes completely over my head. But Likewise. Right, I still think it's very interesting and I appreciate that I still get to learn about it. So you're saying you're meeting a lot of faculty and a lot of staff. I bet you work with a lot of different types of students also. Yes, I do. And my student ambassadors are a great you know, representation mm -hmm. that we have representation from all of our departments. So we have students representing a little bit of everything. And to see them interact with each other, it just makes me happy because I just, I love them so much and they're so smart and they appreciate one another. Yeah. You know, the ones in biological sciences are friends with the ones in English. So getting them, you know, seeing them all interact and taking classes in a bunch of different areas that they're each familiar with. I mean, that's something I really like about that's it. That's awesome. So what do your student ambassadors do? They do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. They are awesome because they do a little bit of everything. So a big part of what they do, they work with me on recruitment. So they text students, they write postcards, they work preview days, they will meet with students if they come to campus to do a visit. We're always happy to set that up. But they also help with events in the college, like our scholarship ceremony. We sometimes have them write postcards to alumni. So they meet with our deans and they give our deans feedback about what's going on in the classroom from a student perspective. So they do a little bit of everything. They really sound like the building block yes, of the College of Arts they and are. Sciences. Yes. And students are who what are really what makes Mississippi State what it is. Yes. And the College of Arts and Sciences students is they're no different. Right. And they're a major part of who we are. And right. I think this would be a great time to hear from one of our College of Arts and Sciences yes. students. My name is Kaylin Sims. I'm a double major in math and philosophy at Mississippi State University. When I was deciding what school I wanted to attend after high school, I was looking for a school that would offer a community of people who were really invested and excited about everything there was to learn in the whole world. And that's exactly what I found at Mississippi State University. In studying math and philosophy, these fields seem pretty unrelated, but they actually overlap so well. Um, for example, in my philosophy classes, philosophers love to talk about how two plus two always equals four and how that's a known truth of the universe. But last semester, I took a math class that was all about how two plus two doesn't always equal four. So in interacting with my professors in both of these classes, I, I'm becoming a better mathematician and a better philosopher at the same time. And outside of the classroom, my professors are really involved in making sure I have all the opportunities available to me. For example, last semester, I studied the Hungarian method of teaching mathematics in Budapest. And I got to go to Munich and attend the Munich Center Summer School on Mathematical Philosophy for female students. However, my time at Mississippi isn't just academic. Um, when I was in high school, I danced for, I, I, I've danced since I was three years old. And last year, I got to be a part of Terpsichore Dance Theater Company. So I got to continue pursuing my passions of childhood into my college career. And I feel like anyone who comes here to Mississippi State University, they're going to find a home that's excited about everything that they want to be and do. That's awesome. I didn't know that sometimes 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4. I didn't either. See, and, I learned something new every and now single we day. Know. <laughs> Our students teach us so much. And yes. One of the great things about listening to Kaylin is just how involved she is. She talked a great deal about being a math and a philosophy major, but she does a lot of things on campus. Right. Is that something you see across your ambassadors and across the students you see in yes. the College of Arts and Sciences? Yes. So when I talk about students being involved, I use, you know, some of them are involved academically. They're in clubs within their department, honor societies, or they serve on committees within their department where they work with faculty members and department heads. And then, you know, they have the fun side of things. So some of them work with, a lot of my ambassadors work with the Brick Fire Mentoring Program. You know, they work with local children in the community. It's an amazing opportunity just hearing them talk about it. And then, you know, like Kaylin said, she's a member of, uh, she still is able to dance. Music on campus is a really big, you know, part of a student experience, whether they're majoring in it or just doing it as an extracurricular activity. But they're, my ambassadors do a little bit of everything. That is awesome. So Kaylin not only is a math major, she's a philosophy major and a dancer. And she does so much more. She didn't even have enough time to go into all the things she does, so. So you're telling me that as a College of Arts and Science student, I'm not just a, I'm not just in my major. Right. I can still be active? Oh yes, so 
The three things that I talk about in the, the college we hit really hard on are research, internships, and studying abroad. That it is so important to get out of the classroom because that a lot of times is how you're going to learn you know, what you're doing in the classroom, that's how you're going to apply it. It's through research or internships. And we started a podcast and just yesterday we were interviewing another one of my ambassadors. Her name is Vasila. She is a psychology major and she is a senior this year, but she's been doing research since she was freshman, sophomore. And hearing the things that she does as a student she sounds like a professional researcher. You know, she was talking about how she was getting to do personality research and mental health research, and she just sounded like the professional because that's how much experience and hands-on opportunity, you know, our students get. So, so you have Priscilla who's doing a great deal of research, but that's not just a one-off. Do a lot of our College of Arts and Science students yes. get a chance to get that hands-on research? Yes, and when I started this job, <laughs> I thought research meant being in a lab, wearing a white coat, wearing goggles, you know, working with dangerous chemicals, but I learned very quickly that there's research in every single area on campus, that there's research in philosophy, English, sociology, criminology. I could just go down the list, you know, with all the different areas of research our students do. And a lot of times students think, well, I don't know how to get involved with that. Well, it's easy talk to your professors, talk to your TAs, talk to your fellow classmates, because my ambassadors, that's what they tell me. You know, Vasila said that she was interested in research. She went to her TA of her class and said, I'm interested in this. She connected Vasila with the professor who was over this research project and she started immediately. So reach out and just talk to people, you know, that's what we're here for. Wow. And we want our students to do those things. So we're more than happy to pair them with the research they're interested in. That, that's an amazing thing to hear from me. I know that's amazing for our students at home. And you talk, we've talked about math, we've talked about philosophy and criminology and all these other programs. But earlier we talked of all the majors that are in the College of Arts and Sciences. Again, 14 departments, 27 degree programs. Tell us about a program that really stands out. So, this is so unfair that I don't get to talk about all of them because they're all amazing, but one program that is nationally known for us that just, we have students come from all over the place that go all across the nation to work is our broadcast and professional meteorology program. That program is so hands-on. They learn not only how to predict the weather, like monitoring the weather in the community, having the cameras up, you know, that they're uh, looking at the radar, but they're also learning how to present it on camera. So that program is doing amazing. You know, so. I think that's a great segue because I'm pretty sure we have Alex over at the Broadcast Meteorology Studio who's gonna give us a tour. So let's toss it over to Alex. Hey there, I'm Alex Forbes, a senior meteorology student here at Mississippi State, and we wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at how we do broadcast meteorology here at Mississippi State and what sets us apart. First off, we have our own studio. We are in the Geosciences studio that's located in Hilbin Hall, complete with a green screen and all. Whenever you see a meteorologist on TV giving the weather, in most cases, they're standing in front of a green wall like this one, and they're looking off to the sides at monitors and in front of the camera there. You see my image there in the camera? There's a camera behind that, and that is how we see to point. So when I'm looking to point to 66 degrees for tailgating, I'm looking off there to the side. Now in some cases, meteorologists don't use green screens. They use regular television screens like you have at home, and we have that capability here at Mississippi State too. We've got a camera and another screen back there, and this flat screen TV where I can still do the weather like on TV as is already done across the United States today. Now, let's step into the control room where all of our functions are controlled. The green screen is run off this computer right here. It's called a TriCaster. This is what mixes the graphics with the image that we produce out of the studio. In the back there, we've got a map of all of our on-air alumni. In fact, one in three meteorologists on TV today have come through Mississippi State in some form or fashion. And the graphics are made on these computers here where Ava's working now. And Ava, we've got temperatures in the 
60s to 50s for the game. Are we still looking like that's going to be the case? Yep, we're looking good, Alex. All right, sounds good. So I hope you enjoyed this behind-the-scenes tour of our broadcast meteorology studio. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Ava. You guys did a great job over in the broadcast meteorology studio. So Alex seems to show that he has a lot of opportunities to be yes. on air. Is yes. that common for our broadcast meteorology students? Yes. So some of their classes are hosted or they're in the studio. That's what they do for class. And Alex gave a really great tour of that. And then, um, you know, I was talking to some of my ambassadors and they were telling me that the broadcast professional meteorology students on the weekends, they go home and present the weather at their local um, news weather station, or they stay in the local area to do that. And it is just so cool. You know, I was at home one weekend and the weather comes on and it's one of our students. You know, I think she was a junior at the time. So they are definitely getting that on-air experience. And even during the summer, being off the camera, they're storm chasing. They literally chase tornadoes with some professors. I think that is crazy, and I'm sure parents think that's crazy as well, but the students absolutely love it. So they're definitely getting a lot of experience. And that's the reason I'm not a meteorologist today. Exactly. Uh, because <laughs> it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a great thing. And so you talk about them working on the weekends and, and in the summer at their local, uh, their local stations. Are there a lot of internship opportunities for broadcast meteorology students? Yes, we send students all across the nation you know, we have alumni working at the um, at the Weather Channel, the National Weather Service, and our students have opportunities to intern at places like that. So, the, and this goes across the college internships. Our students, we tell them, if you graduate from Mississippi State without a resume, something went wrong because that is what your job, you know, is as a student is to learn in the classroom but apply that outside the classroom with internships, research, all those things I've been mentioning. You know, so we have students intern in research on campus. You know, some of them stay on campus and do that through the semester, or some of them go um, during the summer and they spend a summer, you know, researching somewhere, or interning. Vasila, she actually had an internship that was canceled this summer, but it was going to be at the mental health hospital in Tupelo, and she was going to be running the test on the people in this facility. And she's a you know, she's a senior student. She's not a professional psychologist yet. So they're definitely getting to do a lot of cool things. So you're telling me that as a student in the College of Arts and Sciences, when you graduate, you're gonna have ample experience and prepare yes. to enter your career field. Yes, and that goes for working on campus. So I was a student worker in the Office of Public Affairs, and since I was a communication major, they let me work with uh, the communication people in the office and working with social media and you know logging photos. And I learned a lot just within that student worker position. And we have some of our students work at Hell State Productions or they work at the SEC Network. I had a previous ambassador she was a history major, but she was interested in film. So she was interested in using the history major to go work in the film industry, you know, when they're making historical films and TV shows, which are very popular, they need a historian there to make it accurate. So as a student at Mississippi State, she worked for the SEC Network, and when you were at home watching the basketball games or the football games, she was the one behind the camera you know, videoing what you were seeing. Wow. So, yeah. So really it sounds cool. like sounds like there's a lot of cross-discipline opportunities mm -hmm. in the College of Arts and Sciences. We have a lot of students double major. That is very doable. You know, like Kaylin, for example, she's a double major with math and philosophy. Those are in two separate areas. They're in two, you know, the humanity, the science area, but she still is able to double major. Then, you know, we have students double major with biology and chemistry or physics and math, or communication and political science. But if students don't necessarily want to take on a double major, mm -hmm. they can minor. We have awesome minors within the college, and I describe them as mini majors, because you're not actually having to take the full course load of getting a major in it, but you're taking a few of those classes that are very important, and that is going to give you your minor. Awesome. and. 
you know, we have students that want to go to medical school mm -hmm. or law school, both, you know, we have students that send them on that path. We have a pre-law minor mm -hmm. that can be paired with any single degree on campus. It doesn't just have to be political science. We also have the philosophy minor, which is so important for students wanting to go to medical school or law school because, you know, being a doctor and being a lawyer, you have to process a lot of ethical situations quickly. Mm -hmm. And having a philosophy minor or a major sets you apart tremendously. It's amazing to see the scores that these philosophy students are making on the LSAT and MCAT. We have a medical humanities certificate. So that is new mm -hmm. to Mississippi State. And I always, you know, talk about it because a lot of times these medical humanity certificates cannot be gained until you're actually in medical school. But we have that at Mississippi State. So students can graduate with that certificate. And it, you'll be taking classes like medical ethics, the history of medicine. So it's going to give you a very important background into what you're going to be doing to medical school that's not going to be biology, chemistry, you know, all that, those other things. That seems yeah. really <laughs> useful. That's great. And those are all, that's a lot of great programs you have. Yeah. And, and I've had tons of questions for you, but I know our, our, our family back home has questions. And so you guys type your questions in the chat box and, and we're going to get to those in just a sec. But before we get to your questions, I think this will be a great time to hear from the Shackles Honors College. Hi there, my name is Wade Leonard and I'm the coordinator for outreach and student services at the Shackles Honors College at Mississippi State University. And thank you for watching this. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me today to learn about one of the most remarkable honors colleges in the United States of America. Each week I'll talk about a different aspect of the Shackles Honors College to help you get a better understanding of exactly what it is we're doing here and how if you have a particular kind of academic aptitude, you can use the Honors College as a method to get anywhere in the world you want to get to from Mississippi State University. I'll be talking to people like our Director for Student Services, George Dunn. What is it that I love about the Shackles Honors College? It's helping extraordinary students meet that potential that they have when they walk through the doors of Mississippi State. Or Honors College alumnus and Rhodes Scholar, Mr. Field Brown. I'm living proof of what the Shackles Honors College can do for you if you take advantage of the resources provided there. And I'll be talking to students who are currently in the Honors College, like Jayla. So the opportunities the Honors College has afforded me has definitely helped me on my path to becoming a doctor. Um, first through research, but also through funds. Um, I was able to go through a global medical brigade that was funded through the Honors College, as well as my summer research um, at the Mayo Clinic. But today I'd like to try to keep things simple and answer the question that I'm sure everybody wants to know, which is how do I get into the Honors College anyway? Well, there's actually a couple of ways you can do it. The first of which is just the regular application process. Regular application process is open up to any student who's been admitted into Mississippi State University. There's no floor for your ACT score. There's no floor for your grades. Now they are taken into account when we're reviewing your application, but anybody can go through the regular application process. To do that, all you have to do after you've been admitted to the university is go to your My State account, look for the logo that says Shackles Honors College, and you submit an essay and you get me two letters of recommendation. Sometime, usually around January, a committee will convene. They will look over those applications. They will take into account the materials you submitted as well as your grades and ACT scores or SAT scores if you have them, and they'll make a determination based on that. However, for students who have at least a 30 on the ACT or the SAT equivalent, and yes, we accept super scores, and who also have at least a 3.75 GPA, those students will be invited to join the Honors College. You don't have to write the essay and you don't have to get the letters of recommendation. But the thing is, folks, you have to accept that invitation before the 1st of December. After the 1st of December, do not pass go, do not collect $200. You've got to do the regular application like everybody else tell you about another couple of ways you can keep up with everything that's going on in the Honors College. First of all, Honors has a podcast. It's called Honorable Mentions, and you can find it anywhere you get podcasts. It's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on Stitcher, it's on Google Play, it's on all the things. So check that out. 
Also, if you'd like to talk to me directly, you can email me anytime at wleonard at honors.msstate.edu or you can visit me during one of my weekly Zoom sessions. Every Tuesday night at 6 p.m., I host a Zoom session where I talk to people about the Honors College. So please join me for those. You can find the registration links at our website at honors.msstate.edu. That's honors.msstate.edu. Or you can just go over to the Shackles Honors College Facebook page. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope I get to see you all sometime really, really soon. Awesome, thank you, Wade. And so we have questions coming in, and so I'll start asking some of our questions. I have a question from Kenneth Vaughn that asks, could you join other choirs or ensembles while studying another major? That's a great question. That is a really good question. So students, a lot of times, you know, were in choir or band or did anything with music growing up. And I tell them, please pursue that in college. You can minor in music, if you are another major, you can double major with music if you're another major. So no matter what your major is, you can double major minor or just get involved with, you know, music opportunities. They have choir, orchestra, they host over 100 concerts a year. So there are plenty of opportunities to use music, uh, you know, throughout college, no matter what your major is. That's great. I hope that answered your question, Kenneth. Uh, Tierra Tidwell asks, is, are there only meteorology and broadcasting or other focuses as well? That's a good question as also. That is a really good question. So, the, so meteorology um, and professional, meteoro broadcast and professional meteorology are in the Department of Geosciences. Now within the Department of Geosciences, there are six concentration areas and broadcast and professional meteorology are only two of them. We have environmental geosciences, geography, Geo geographical information center, um, the, of course the meteorology and geology. My older brother is actually an employee on campus. He did environmental geosciences and then he went on to work in the environmental health and safety department and he's now the radiation safety specialist. So there's a lot of different things you can do within geosciences. That's awesome. So. And I think Tierra is asking about other broadcasting opportunities. I, I know, for instance, I have a broadcasting degree from the university, so there are some other things you can do in broadcasting as well. Yes, so within the Department of Communication, there are five concentrations, and one of those is broadcasting. So that broadcasting major, you can probably talk a lot about it too since you did it, that is just is hands-on. We have a brand new broadcasting studio in the library. I've been in there. It is amazing. Huge green screen. They have really cool cameras, their own computer lab as well. So they focus on everything but weather. So if you want that broadcasting opportunity, it is very easy to double major or, you know, add a bunch of different things to that broadcasting concentration. So, and, yeah. and like I said, you know about it. Yeah, broadcasting uh, we did a lot of things. You, yeah. TV news is kind of it was the basis of our broadcasting program, but you learn more than TV news. We have entertainment sessions now, and, and you get to learn all the behind the scenes of being a broadcaster. It's a great opportunity. And another question we had is, when you're visiting campus, do you get the opportunity to meet with students like Kaylin? Yes, so when students visit campus, they can request through the Office of Admissions to meet with an academic area. So a lot of times that's probably me, but because I work with our ambassadors, I will reach out to our ambassadors and I'll say, hey, we have a student interested in psychology coming. You know, would one of my psychology ambassadors be able to meet with them and give them a tour of the psychology department? And that just happened a week or two ago. I had one of my psychology ambassadors. She met up with a, um, with a prospective student, gave her a tour, they went to the union, had coffee. So it's, you can learn a lot from current students. Current students are way more knowledgeable than yeah. us. They're going through it at this moment. And that kind of answers our next question. Is it possible to visit the broadcast meteorology student in person on a visit? Yes, so as long as you request that ahead of time through the Office of Admissions, you know, when you register for your visit, as long as you request that you want to meet with somebody in that area, we will help work it out. So where Alex was, you can go there and see what it's like. So. 
Oh, we have a question, and this is a great question, a very popular question. Can you tell us about pre-med? Yes, so I cannot believe I haven't mentioned this yet, right. but yeah. there are multiple pre-health concentrations at Mississippi State. Pre-med is our most popular, and because pre-med is a concentration, that means it is paired with other majors. So biology is a popular one within the College of Arts and Sciences, but there are also other popular ones you know, across the um, university. So the way those concentrations work, we have pre-med, pre-dental, pre-pharmacy, pre-nursing, I could keep going. We have a lot of different options. They are, those concentrations are specific to that school. Mm -hmm. So I'll use pre-med. The pre-med concentration is made up of specific classes that will prepare you for medical school. And then as long as you're pairing that concentration with your major of interest, then you're prepared through your curriculum. But we also have the Health Professions Resource Center. Cannot believe I haven't said this yet. That center is going to be one of your biggest resources if you want to do anything in the health career field, anything, health administration, nursing school, pharmacy school, anything. Because what they do, Dr. Reese is the director. She's been doing it a while. She's a good friend of mine. She's amazing. Won the National Advising Awards. Uh, she's the director, and then we have um, Claire Powell as an advisor. I know they're working to get another advisor, and they have student ambassadors through their office, but what they do, they work with students one-on-one, -on -one and they say, okay, which medical school do you want to get into? Which dental school do you want to get into? And from there, they'll go over the application process with you, help you with your resume, help you log shadowing hours, hold mock interviews, do test prep with you. They will host admissions counselors from these schools on campus. They have clinics set up where you can get a lot of hands-on opportunity. I haven't even listed all of the resources that they have in that office, but you can visit them as early as your freshman year. So the minute you step on campus, if you know you want to do something, you know, as a health professional, go visit them in that office. Their doors open, send them an email, call them, they'll meet with you. Wow, so it sounds like even though we don't have a med school on campus, right. we're doing everything and more to get students prepared. Oh, yeah. We have an, yeah, we have an amazing placement rate in awesome. medical school. So we have another question. Uh, how are the student visits changed since COVID? That's a great question from Ms. Meredith Johnson. So we are taking every precaution mm -hmm. that there is. They have limited campus visits um, because, you know, being in a room with people, but we still want to make the most out of your visit. You'll still get a Roadrunner tour. You still have the opportunity to meet with different people. So like me, if you say, I'm really interested in this, you know, um, you can still set up with me. We'll be social distance, we'll be wearing our mask, but there, we still want to make the most of that. So we are doing some of the same things we always do, just at a distance. That's true. Right. And we've been able to socially distance our, our, our opportunities to present uh, presentations. So in our presentation room, we are socially distanced while wearing our mask. Uh, we've also added some opportunities called Fall Fridays, which is a large on-campus visit day where we can socially distant, but still offer an opportunity for a large group of students to come to campus. And so we're really excited about that. And then we have our virtual opportunities for those who can't travel or are not comfortable traveling yet. And we have plenty of those. I do have a question that says, can you talk about Fall Fridays, which is a great segue. And so Fall Fridays is what you would typically see on our campus as preview days. And so throughout Fridays in the fall, starting next week, actually, yes. we will highlight different academic colleges and you can come and meet with them in person. And so you'll get an on-campus opportunity to learn from that academic college in a large setting, but not too large, where we can still give you that one-on-one -on -one attention and you get that opportunity to be on, on our campus. So we're really excited about Fall Fridays. I, we, there were a lot of questions and, yeah. and we have more questions. So I wanna make sure you get your questions answered. If you weren't able to get your question answered today, email us at admit at msstate.edu or you can give us a call at 662-325-2224 and be sure to reach out to your regional admissions counselor. We have admissions counselors all across the country and we have people who are assigned to your area. Hannah, this will be a great time. Tell us how we can get in contact with you. So by email, of course, uh, if you, I, 
You know, my email is very accessible, hbateman at dnas.msstate.edu, but it's also on the website. And you can give me a call. You, you know, when you do send me an email or when you do call me, that is a great way for me to then put you in contact with one of our ambassadors. Our ambassadors are constantly texting students or writing postcards, like I mentioned earlier, and they get so excited to help prospective students because they say all the time, I remember when I was a prospective student and how much it meant when a current student reached out to me. So they are just waiting to talk to prospective students. We also are on social media, the college is, and one of the things I'm most excited to talk about is our new podcast. So our podcast is called Discover Your And, and we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. And it has been an amazing you know, experience so far. I've been featuring our ambassadors on the podcast and hearing them talk about their personal experiences and what Mississippi State has done for them. It's just so heartwarming and I learned from them just, you know, on the podcast. Gosh, so. I, I can only imagine. I just listening to Kaylin earlier, we, we learned so much and I'm so excited that we got that opportunity. And so for those of you who are coming to campus and want to come to campus, you can definitely visit us in person. You go to admissions.msstate.edu and you can get a chance to visit that way. We have in-person visits. We host those Monday through Friday. We also, like I said earlier, have our fall Friday opportunities. And when you come to campus, we can also connect you with Hannah Bateman and you can learn more about the College of Arts and Sciences. If you can't make it in person, we also have plenty of virtual opportunities just like this one we're doing today as it's major and we have more it's majors coming throughout the rest of this this semester where we will highlight different academic colleges but we also host virtual information sessions in addition to those virtual information sessions Hannah Bateman is also offering some virtual sessions for the College of Arts and Sciences. So there are plenty of ways to get in contact with us. We hope you've learned a lot today and enjoyed us. And as always, if there's anything we could do for you, let us know. Hell State.